Guys, welcome along. Just while we're uh, waiting for six o'clock, just having a look at the question in front of you and uh, have a think about what the answer might be. So I make it 5.57, we will start at 6 p.m. prompt. If you want to say hi in the chat, just to um, <laughs> suggest that you can hear me and understand me okay, please do so. Okay, hello, good evening, and uh, welcome along to the live stream on IGCSE Physics. Let's hopefully get my face somewhere in the screen, and uh, then you'll be able to see me as well as hear me. That looks okay. Right, guys, um, rules of the game. If you have any questions while I'm talking, please just uh, type them into the chat, and uh, we'll have a look together at the 2019 question paper four. So this is how to answer them. So we start off quite gently. We'll have a motorcycle with a rear lamp. The lamp has a resistance. This is R of 30 ohms and a potential difference or voltage of 12 volts. This is quite a nice question. It's telling me that the current given is 0 0.4. So we know that um, V equals I R so therefore, I will equal V over R. 
Let's use the capital letters. V over R. Okay. Our voltage is 12 volts. 12. And my resistance is 30 ohms. 12 divided by 30 equals 0 0.40 amps. Just be careful, use the same number as significant figures, or in this case, decimal places, as the question that is being asked. So V equals IR, nice way to begin. Next one calculates the power. Now, if we remember, power equals power equals volt times our current, doesn't it? Well, our volts was 12, and my current was 0 0.40. So I make that a power output of 4.4.8 4 watts. And a text box, there we go. So this will be 4.8. And it's giving me the units in the question, which is great. 4.8 watts. Okay, calculate the charge. Now charge, there is the equation. Again, this is IGCSE physics, as we know and love it. Q equals IT, so charge is current times time. Our current, as we can see from up here, is 0 0.4 amps. So that's going to equal 0 0.4 times. Now it's 30 minutes, and we have to be a bit, bit careful here, don't we? Because it's not just times 30, it's times 30 times 60 to get it into seconds. So give us an answer in coulombs, and 0 0.4 times 30 times 60, I make 720 coulombs. Very good. Any questions so far? Okay. The battery is charged by an AC generator. We all love these. This shows a simple AC generator. We can see the permanent magnet, which is in place. We even have the direction of rotation on the arrow, which is in the question. On figure 3.2, label the slip rings with the letter R. So here we have our slip rings. Very good. Label the coil with the letter C. Okay, I can do that. There is the coil. Show the direction of the magnetic field with an arrow. I wonder if I have any uh, north through to south, isn't it? Hopefully there'll be an arrow <laughs> On the end of there, let's just draw a little arrow end on there. Direction of the magnetic field is north to south. One letter for slip uh, one mark for slip rings, one mark for the coil, and one mark for direction of the magnetic field, which is great. The output is alternating. Describe the difference between direct current and alternating current. Well, DC is, uh, as the great pop band says, one direction only. And AC is clearly the opposite. It is changing direction. And for one mark, that's more than enough. Now we have a question about longitudinal waves. We can see the compression C and rarefactions R. You can see that the gaps between the sites of where it is rarefied and the gaps between where it is compressed are relatively wider and relatively closer together. So the motorcycle engine is noisy and emits sound waves that pass through the air. And this shows the positions of the compressions and rarefactions that the sound wave passes through the air. Suggest and explain why the positions of the compressions and rarefactions change if the pitch Remember, pitch, and pitch is another word for frequency, okay? So, it says how, how, suggest how, so it's three, right, the command terms are suggest, how, explain, why, change, okay? So, I want to suggest and explain. These are the command terms which I need to be thinking about, okay? So, just explain why, they're, right, so first of all, higher pitch equals higher Frequency. Yes, you got it. Higher pitch is higher frequency. Higher frequency means what? It means that there are more more waves per second passing a particular point, which would mean that the compressions and the rarefactions are 
closer together, or even better, you could say the regions of compression and rarefaction are closer together if we have higher pitch or the corollary, the same thing, is a higher frequency. Okay, any questions on that little bit there? Okay, nice and straightforward. Um, we have some bio biology stuff, a bit of chemistry stuff, so we we'll all that. Stick to the physics. We'll do chemistry next week, and then we hopefully have... Ah! The visible light produced by the headlamps of a train is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Write visible light in the correct position in the incomplete electromagnetic spectrum in figure 6.1. Gamma? Mm, no, it's not going to be here. Ultraviolet, so that's going to be infrared. So here we have our visible light. The electromagnetic spectrum comes up every year, so make sure you know it. One of the numbers that you need to know is the speed of light in a vacuum, always in a vacuum. And that's going to be three times 10 to the power of eight. Can I do a superscript in here? It looks like I can. Yes, and that's going to be in, oh, the unit's already given for me, meters per second. So that's just a number you need to know. If you want to think about the other numbers you need to know, speed of sound in air, for instance, then learn those numbers and you will pass your IGCSE in physics. Okay, the approaching train can be heard through the air and there's a ringing sound in the steel rails. We're all familiar with this living in Singapore, I'm sure. The speed of sound in air, 330 meters per second, thank you, you gave me that, and the speed of sound in steel is 6,000 meters per second. So suggest, oh, this is the command term now. It's not describe, it's not define, it's not calculate. It's to suggest the value for the speed of sound through water. Well, in air, it's 330. And in steel, so air is gas. Steel is solid. So it's much faster in solid, much slower in air. So in water, it must be somewhere, anywhere, greater than 330 and less than 6,000. So I'd put it somewhere equidistant, I don't know, 4,000 meters per second, and you would be good. Why? Because solids are greater than liquids, which are greater than gases in terms of their ability to transmit sound. Okay? It says to explain it, why? Well, the atoms, atoms in solids, are packed the closest. They're closest together, they are touching each other, they are more close, so therefore they can transfer that sound energy through their bulk much more effectively and efficiently than you could in a liquid. Try shouting underwater in your pool later, see how far you get. Part two, calculate the time difference between a sound traveling at 0 0.5 kilometers through the air and 0 0.5 kilometers through steel rails. Show you're working. Well, speed is distance over time, isn't it? S is D over T. So time is going to be distance uh, over speed. So let's have a look. We've got the time in air, and that's going to be equal to 500, remember this, 0 0.5 kilometers needs to be transferred into meters and we'll catch a few students out you add about 330 because that's the time uh, the speed in air sorry which i make 1.515 and then we have the time in the steel which again same distance but now is 6000 meters per second which goes 0 0.0833 I'm missing my units. Don't forget your units. So the difference between those, so if I subtract 0 0.0833 from 1.515, we get 1.4 seconds. So the difference is 1.4 seconds and it gives me two whole juicy marks for that. The train emits sound waves with a frequency, so F is 500 cycles per second, or hertz, which travel through the air at a speed 
or 330 meters per second. Calculate the wavelength. Well, V equals F lambda, so lambda is V over F, which is 330 over 500, which I make to be 0 0.66. Yeah, 0 0.66, and again, the unit is given for me, meters. 0 0.66 meters is the answer. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Visible waves are transverse. Describe the differences between longitudinal and transverse. You should all be pretty good at this one. Longitudinal, that means the direction of oscillation Oscillation is, what's the word here? Perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. And then transverse, ah, quite well. Transverse is perpendicular. Just checking you're listening. Transverse is perpendicular. And then longitudinal, which one is longitudinal? Tudinal. This one is parallel, is the key word. Parallel to the direction of travel of the waves. The key words here are perpendicular or transverse and parallel or longitudinal. Now I have a bit more chemistry. And as always, the next physics question is a graphing question. Let's have a look. During a mission in 1971 to the moon, an astronaut dropped a feather and a hammer. I played this in class, which was done by uh, BBC. It was a beautiful video done in the uh, NASA Research Laboratory. The feather and hammer were released from the same height, same potential energy from the, uh, the same time. Both fell for 1.3 seconds and landed at the same time. The acceleration of the gravity uh, on the moon is 1.6 meters per second squared. Assume the moon has no atmosphere, pretty much does. Okay, what do we have to do? Draw the speed time graph for the falling feather. Well, it's a constant acceleration, isn't it? So I think we're going to need to do a straight line. So we're gonna have to go from here. This is gonna to have to go up to 1.3 which is here, 1.3, yep, there, and that finishes at, it went through 1 and 1 1.6, which is there, finished at 1.3, so there would be my straight line graph. It must go through 0, 0, because clearly at time 0, its speed was 0, it's pretty much spot on. And it must also stop at 1.3 seconds, 1.2, halfway to 1.4, 1.3, meters per second squared. One, 1.6, one, 1 1.6 here. So all that will be checked. And if you do that correctly, you'll get four, uh, sorry, two beautiful marks for that. Yes, two marks. The experiment is repeated on Earth. We should all know the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Two differences in the results obtained. Well, what's going to be difference one? What's going to happen to the hammer on Earth? Well, the hammer's going to fall faster on Earth, isn't it? Why is it going to fall faster on Earth? Well, yes, you are correct. Gravity is greater on Earth. Difference two, well, the corollary is that the feather falls more slowly, but for a different reason. Why does the feather fall more slowly? Because on Earth, there is a resistance. Is that enough for the mark scheme? That is enough for the mark scheme. You get four beautiful marks for that. The astronaut wears a white suit rather than a black suit. Suggest and explain a reason well, that's going to reflect thermal energy. The astronaut is exposed to more ionizing radiation than people who remain on the Earth. One harmful effect, uh, you can put cancer uh, or you can have mutation of cells. 
This one is alpha radiation. Remember, alpha radiation is a helium nucleus, which has an atomic mass of four, an atomic number of two. So if we take four from 239, we're going to get 235. And if we take two from 94, we get 92. And the element, which is element number 92, is uranium. And of course, we also get our four and our two, because it's alpha radiation. And of course, that is helium. There we go. So just take four and two from the atomic mass and the atomic number respectively. Look up the atomic number that is here, also called the proton number, from your periodic table, and you will have the correct answer for alpha decay ionizing radiation. Bit of biology, bit of chemistry, and ah, some physics. Figure 12.1 shows a solar-powered golf cart with solar cells on the roof. These produce electrical energy using solar energy, which is the sun. Name two energy sources that do not have the sun as their source of energy. The first one that comes to mind for me is nuclear energy. And then you could have geothermal. Uh, you could have wind. Um, maybe wind is directly from the sun. These two are definitely not having the origins from the sun. During the golf cart's journey, the temperature increases in the tires as it's going round through friction. The volume does not change because it's a sealed system. The valve is on. Explain in terms of molecules the effect on the pressure of a gas due to an increase in temperature at constant pressure. Common sense is, is true. If we increase the temperature, we increase the pressure. But it says explain. The command term is to explain. So if we increase the pressure, we increase the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Let's make sure we get two marks on this one. If we increase the pressure, we increase the collisions with the walls of the container increase. Definitely two marks in anybody's book for that answer. Okay, the golf cart travels across sloping fields, so stability is important in its design, it is. And this is that center of mass experiment that we did in class. State the effect of raising the center of the mass on the golf cart of its stability. So if you've got a person with a very large head up here or wearing a helmet or uh, putting some suitcases on the roof, what's going to happen? then it's going to become less stable. It's going to be more likely to fall over. Okay. This one, a thin converging lens is used to focus light onto the light sensor inside the camera. Okay. Complete the rear diagram in figure 12.3 to show this. So here we have the center of the lens. We were doing this the other day. Let's get a drawing uh, shapes. Uh, let's have a line. So if this is going to focus onto here, we've got no idea where the principle of focus is, but it's got to focus onto the light sensor here. It will be refracted and bent into here. So how many marks? Only one mark. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> stingy, a little bit stingy. Right, text box. Define refractive index in terms of speed of light. So Ri is speed of light in a vacuum divided by speed of light, which in this case is in glass. It doesn't ask you to do it, it doesn't ask you to measure anything, it just says define. So again, this is about going back to the command terms and making sure you're answering the question which has been asked. The image produced by the lens on the light sensor is a real image. What's the difference between a real and a virtual image? Real can be projected on a screen. And then virtual, well, this one appears to be behind the lens or mirror. Okay. Describe in terms of 
forces between the atoms, why solids have a fixed shape. This is because they have very strong forces of attraction between neighboring atoms. Beautiful. And for that paper four from 2019, we've just very slowly, very steadily answered one third of the paper. And you would have got two hours to do well. We've done it in half the time. And I thought we went quite slowly. So um, that's kind of it for this evening. Just a 20 minute uh, quick session on uh, paper four and how to answer for physics. We'll do another one next Friday on chemistry. If you have any questions raised by this, please send me an email. Um, if not, well done for watching and I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe out there, kids, and uh, keep working. You'll get there. Well done. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Bye-bye.